Hello and welcome to our introduction to paper making and this unit is an introduction to chemicals. Now in this unit we're not we're not going to talk about the very complicated wet end chemistry involved in paper machines. This is just a general unit to talk about the chemicals that we use every day and why we use them. And the, chemi the uh, questions we'll be asking in this unit are why do we use chemicals at all? What's a functional aid? And what are some examples of functional aids? And what is a process aid? And what are some examples of process aids? Okay, let's begin. Chemicals used in the paper industry fall into one of three groups. They're either cleaning chemicals, and these we tend to use when the machine is not making paper. There are functional chemicals or functional aids and they are put in the paper to give the sheet a property that the end user or the customer wants such as colour or strength or brightness and process aids are put there for the benefit of the mill they either make the process more economical to operate or they make life easier for the machine let's start with cleaning chemicals as I said, these are the chemicals that are used when the machine is not really running, not, not producing paper. And we use the whole range of essentially solvents, acids, alkalis, organic solvents, even bleach. Their aim is to scour the system and remove all the things that shouldn't be there. It could be scale, it could be chemicals adhering to the surfaces of things, it could be bacteria, but uh, those are normally used, as I said, when the machine is not running. When the machine is running, then we need functional aids and process aids. So what is a functional aid? A functional aid is there that gives a property to the final sheet. And here are some examples. Dry strength aids, such as starch. These days it will be cationic starch. Wet strength aids. Now, wet strength aids fall into two categories. There is permanent wet strength, which is maybe something that a tea bag will need, and there's temporary wet strength, something that a toilet roll will need. Examples of permanent wet strengths are usually based on on uh, nitrogen chemistry. Things like uh, melamine and urethmaldehydes are the uh, old-fashioned type of wet strength aids still used today, and um, the more modern wet strength agents are based on uh, polyamine compounds. Temporary wet strengths are normally based on something like a dialdehyde starch. Dyes, pigments, OBAs really speak for themselves. A dye is a soluble colouring material. A pigment is an insoluble colouring material. And an OBA, or if the Americans call it an FWA, fluorescent whitening agent, OBA is optical brightening agent and those things are there to absorb UV light and to re-emit them in the blue region and the human eye is fooled it believes that blue is white so it makes things makes things brighter and then finally there are sizing agents chemicals that are put into the sheet so that the sheet will resist penetration of liquids into its surface so there we're giving you some examples of uh, those agents and we can move on now to uh, process aids. Process aids are there for the benefit of the process. So for example, antiformer and deformer, they're there to either stop air getting entrained in the system or to get rid of it when it is there so that we don't get form. If we don't, if we don't get form, then we don't get form spots. We, don't, we uh, will improve the appearance of the sheet. Anything to do with removing air is, is always good. Biocides, we mentioned earlier on in another unit that uh, the basic building block of cellulose is glucose. And the glucose, glucose is the perfect food for almost all bacteria. So, with glucose there, bacteria around a warm, wet environment, lots of oxygen, the perfect breeding ground for bacteria. 
So essential to have bacteria sides there to kill off as much bacteria as possible. That will uh, reduce the formation of uh, stickies and slime. Retention aids, and we'll talk a little bit about more retention aid after this slide, but retention aids are there to make the process more economical. You know, in an ideal world, everything that squirts out of the slice onto the wire should stay on the wire and only perfectly clear water would go all the way through the wire. Life is never perfect and therefore some material does go through the wire. When it goes through the wire it's going to abrade the wire. When it goes through the pipes and pumps it's going to abrade the pipes and pumps. And if it's uh, cellulose, if it stays there long enough it'll break down and become glucose. So the more we can keep there first time the better it is. And as I said, we'll, we'll, on the next slide, we'll have a little look at retention aids in more detail. Fixing agents, there to uh, maybe like mordants to fix the, fix the dyes onto the, uh, the fibres sometimes. And uh, dispersing agents to uh, disperse uh, bits of uh, stickies to make them small enough so that they don't become large and cause a problem. If stickies remain very very tiny then they're too small to do any damage. It's only when the stickies come together and become big that they can rip a hole out of a sheet or they can block the mesh of the wire and stop the water going through or they can seal part of the surface of a dryer felt or a, or a press felt. So on now to the final slide. And I did say that we talked a little bit about retention aids. There are essentially four different mechanisms of retention. There's the so-called patch flocculation method, where we put, we take a negative fibre and we put patches of positive polymer on, so that the positive parts of the polymer will then be attracted to the negative side part sites of another fibre. There's bridging flocculation, as you can see here where we have very long strands of polymer that become entangled. There are complex fl flocculation mechanisms and then one of the problems with all of these is they bring the fibres so close together that it's difficult for the water to drain through. So although we improve our uh, retention then we slow down the drainage rates and there are complex systems such as the microparticle systems that bring in particles like bentonite or silica and so what that does is when the particles come together it holds them apart and therefore improves the retention and all of these things we go to uh, into a lot more detail in my face-to-face uh, -face courses. Well I hope you've enjoyed this uh, taster session on chemicals and I look forward to seeing you in one of our formal courses. Bye for now.